welcome students my name is taibaj bin today we will discuss the topic of functional theories of translation a topic from course title translational studies first have a look on the topic functional theories of translation first i want to explain the topic what is meant by translation translation is the process of rendering the meaning of a text from one language into an other language in the way that the author intended to do now coming to the other aspect that is the functional theories in a narrow sense translation theory is concerned with the translational method the method the approaches the techniques that are involved in the process of the uh, of translation if we talk about the broader way of translation theory so translation theory reflect the body of knowledge that we have about translation so we can say translation is a central core of linguistic act activity and you can say theory is an explanation of the phenomenon or it would be the perception of the system it may be a order of something observed in order to have a better understanding of translational studies as a discipline we need to look at the theories of translation In the second half of the 20th century around 1980s many theories evolved in the field of translational studies which test divergent issues from different fields functional theory developed almost about 1980s when the main emphasis of translation shifted from structural linguistic to pragmatic aspect of linguistic in 1970s and 1980s a functional and communicative approach was introduced to analyze translation of a text so in this lecture we are focusing on following subheadings first we are focusing on text level that was introduced by katrina rice and stasis equivalence at text level and also link functions of language to text type and translational studies second theory that is integrated approach to text type proposed by snell's horn by third theory theory of translatorial action proposed by hols mentari next theory is one of the popular theory among all the functional theories of translation that is vermeer's cooper's theory and it depend on the purpose of tt lastly we focus on the nor translational oriented text analysis learning objective by the end of this class student will be able to differentiate between rice text types practically understand marnis nels horny integrated approach understand the translational action or translatorial action model adapted by justa holsmentari next we are going to look at the scoopers theory now we are going to start first theory that is theory of equivalence at text level katrina rice work on this theory in 1970 and build the concept of equivalence within a text level in a text text or in a text level she proposed that the text is very important 
rather than the word or sentence so we can say that communication is achieved by the text not by the words or sentences so equivalence must be sought out at this level her functional approach aimed initially at systematizing the assessment of translation she also introduced the four functions of language categorization of the three functions of language by german psychologist and linguist karl boller so basically he introduced she introduces four functions of language but most commonly we consider only the three language functions that is informative function expressive function and optative functions so in this table we are going to focus on the three types of functions that is informative expressive and operative informative is a kind of text type whose language function is informative representing objects and facts dimension of language is logical focus of the text is content focused and translation method is plain prose now coming to the second function of language that is expressive function of language is expressive means it expresses the sender's attitude dimension of language for this type of text is aesthetic focus of the text is on form and the method of translation is identifying method third type of the text that is operative and the function of language is appellative making an appeal to text receiver dimension of language is dialogic F text focus on appellative focused and method of translation is adaptive equivalent to effect characteristic of text type the main characteristics of each text type are summarized by rice as follows informative text type plain communication of facts mostly dependent on information knowledge opinions second expressive text type which is creative compositions the author uses the aesthetic dimensions of language it is more expressive type of text operative text type inducing behavioral responses The aim of the appellative functions is to appeal or to persuade the reader or receiver of the text to act in a certain way. For example, to buy a product or to agree to an argument. The form of language is dialogic and the focus is appellative. Now the third one is mostly used in ads, the operative text type. Now coming to the fourth one audio medial text which is mostly used in entertainment industry especially in films and in audio visuals or spoken advertisement which supplement the other three functions with visual images audio medial text involves the visual images and it also include music etc it is now commonly called the multimodal text rice instruction criteria there are two basic criteria one is linguistic component which deals with semantic equivalence lexical equivalence grammatical and stylistic features so linguistic components mainly focus on the semantic lexical grammatical approaches they are more concerned to word the equivalence at semantic level and lexical level on the other hand the second part that is the non linguistic determinants deal with the situation subject field or domain time place 
प्लेस हेयर मीन्स द करेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ कंट्री एंड कल्चर रिसीवर सेंडर एंड अफेक्टिव इम्प्लीकेशन सो हेयर वी कंक्लूड दैट राइस वर्क इज इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज इट मूव ट्रांसलेशन थ्योरी बियॉन्ड अ कंसिडरेशन ऑफ लोअर लिंग्विस्टिक लेवल द मियर वर्ड्स ऑन द पेज बियॉन्ड इवन द इफेक्ट दे क्रिएट सो राइस थ्योरी एंड द इंस्ट्रक्शन क्राइटेरिया हेल्प अर्स टू फोकस ऑन द डिफरेंट परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ थोरेटिकल एस्पेक्ट वन ऑफ द क्रिटिसिजम इज why there should only be three types of language functions or the four types although she works in the same functionalist tradition as size not perhaps implicitly accept this criticism by feeling the need to add fourth phatic function so we are folk moving toward the criticism so this theory faced various criticism and you cannot avoid these types of criticism in any theory so one of the criticism is why there should only be three types of language functions works in the same functionalist tradition as rice finally the translation method employed depend on far more than just text type now coming to the second theory snell's horn by integrated approach an integrated approach the vena based scholar teacher and translator review and attempt to include a wide variety of different linguistic and literary concept and no more than mary snell's horn by who is overarching integrated approach to translational based on text type hornby comes from a predominantly german theoretical background and notably borrows the notion of prototype for categorizing text type depending on the text type under consideration she incorporates cultural history literary studies socio cultural and area studies and for legal economic medical scientific translation the study of the relevant sub- specialized subjects so now we are focusing on text type and relevant criteria proposed by on by level a includes literary translation deals with general language translation and also with special language translation level b deals with bible trade film medical poetry deals with newspaper general information text advertising language Moreover it also include legal language economic language medical and science technology Level C have the text type related to cultural historical aspects and literary study relevant criteria for translation is socio cultural and area studies moreover it also deals with study of special subjects Level D level D is a extensive one and divided into three categories extension of language norms deals with the scope of interpretation and relevant criteria for translation is conceptual identity in second approach to text type in level D is recreation of language dimension relevant criteria for translation is grade of differentiation and moreover it relates to invariance the third form in level d is shifting of perspective relevant criteria for translation is 
communicative functions of translation and deals with information functions. Level E. Text type is historical linguistics. Relevant criteria for translation is text, grammar, semantic. However, it also relates to the sociolinguistic, psycholinguistic, and paralinguistic approaches. Level F Speakability, which is related to the phonology and phonetic aspects of the text. And the relevant criteria for translation is related to rhythm and sound, and moreover, phonological effects. So this is a brief introduction uh, of text type and their relevant criteria for translation proposed by Horn Bai. Inconsistencies in Snell Horn Bai's integrated approach. On level B, one of the inconsistency asked the question, can all newspaper text really be taken together as general language translation? Some may be quite specialized, technical, scientific, financial, sporting, etc. Now the main important question arises, should film translation be treated as literary translation? So can we relate film, the visual impact, with visual impact and audio video film Film translation be treated as literary translation. So there are so many inconsistencies in the integrated approach by Horn Bai. Then there is another question. Why is advertising placed further from the literary than is general? On level C, which is focused on cultural history, it may also be asked that is this relevant? to the translation of a medical text as to a literary one? Can even we say that the medical text, the reports, the medical reports are related to literature? So there are so many inconsistencies in Snell Thornby's indicated approach. Similarly, in the last one, speakability, we can also say that there are certain certain things which cannot be related to liter literature which is not concerned with literary it's about speakability it's about the speaking ability the phonetic effects not on the literature or something related to the art of writing so we can say Speakability need not to be restricted to literature. Translation of foreign news interviews may be designed to be read as a voiceover. So, overall we conclude that even though we may quibble with Snell's horn by categorization, the removal of rigid division be between different types of language is to be welcome. There is no necessity for translational studies to focus only on literary or religious terms, as was so often the case in its early days. On the other hand, it would also be true to say that the consideration of all kinds of language in such an integrated continuum does not necessarily produce more useful results for the analysis of translation and for translator training also. So now we are moving toward the other theory that is Hall's Mentari's theory of translatorial action. Translatorial action model proposed by Justa Hall's Mentari takes up concept from communication theory and action theory. So this model is related to the communication theory and provides a model and produce guidelines that can be applied to a wide range of professional translational situations. So we can say that the translatorial action is more extensively used in professional settings as compared to the previous theories. 
बिकॉज इट ऑल्सो रिलेट्स कम्युनिकेटिव एस्पेक्ट एंड द एक्शन एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द थ्योरी फॉर दैम द टेक्स्ट इज जस्ट अ कम्युनिकेशन एक्टिविटी और अ कम्युनिकेटिव एक्टिविटी प्रोसेस ऑफ ट्रांसलेशन इज ऑल्सो कंसिडर्ड एज मैसेज ट्रांसमीटर कंपाउंड दिस इज वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट सो फॉर मंतारी ट्रांसलेटोरियल एक्शन डील्स विद मैसेज ट्रांसमीटर कंपाउंड दैट इन्वॉल्व इंटर कल्चरल ट्रांसफर सो इट्स नॉट ओनली रिलाई ऑन द लिंग्विस्टिक पैटर्न बट ऑल्सो इट रिलेट्स टू इंटर कल्चरल ट्रांसफर वेन वी आर कम्युनिकेटिंग वी आर नॉट यूजिंग ओनली वर्ड्स वी आर कम्युनिकेटिंग अदर काइंड ऑफ कल्चरल एंड सोशो इकोनॉमिक कंडीशन ऑल्सो वेन एवर वी स्पीक वेन एवर वी अटर अ टेक्सट और वी कम्युनिकेट we are not only giving a signifier or signified aspects but we are also focusing on the cultural aspects on socio economic conditions somehow our communication depicts that kind of effects roles and players for communication interlingual translation is described as translation action from a source of text and as a communicative process involving a series of roles and players which are six in number we have here six different types of role players the initiator the commissioner the st producer tt producer tt user tt receiver the initiator who is going to start the process of translation the company or individual who needs the translation so initiator is always a company who needs the translation or an individual second one we have the commissioner the individual or agency who contact the translator commissioner is like a middle person who is trying to translate some kind of text. the st producer the source text producer it's none other than the writer who is going to produce the original work the individual within the company who writes the st and who are not necessarily involved in the tt production so here we can get the idea that writer is quite different from the translator writer is going to produce a uh, produce original text that is st producer and it's quite different from tt producer which is the translator so fourth one is the tt producer who is going to play the role of translator and the translation agency or department tt user the person who uses the tt tt receiver the final recipient of the tt who is going to take advantage of that translation translator translatorial action translatorial action focuses primarily on producing a text that is in the target language and is functionally communicative for the receiver consequently the form and genre of the tt must be guided by what is functionally suitable in the tt culture according to the choice of the translator who should ensure that the intercultural transfer occurs satisfactorily in this model the st is analyzed solely for its construction and function profile Hall's mentaries relevant features for analysis of text relevant features are described according to the traditional split of content and form so relevant features proposed by mentaries can be differentiated into two forms one is content and the other is form content is further divided into two parts one is the factual information and the other deals with the communicative strategies now coming to the other part 
form is further divided into two parts that is terminology and cohesive element so far we conclude that the hols montari's theory of translatorial action takes up concept from communication theory and her aim among others was to provide a model and produce guidelines so here we are given a list of guidelines that can be applied to a wide range of professional translational situations these all guidelines are related to translational situations one way or the other it also relate to the process of translation as message transmitter compound this is very important concept that involve intercultural transfer it is not about translating words sentences or text but is in every case about guiding the intended cooperation over cultural barriers enabling functionally oriented communication in order in order to conclude the montari's work it is important to note that translation within its socio cultural context including the interplay between the translator and the initiator montari proposed that later on it described the professional profile of the translator the model can be criticized not least for the complexity of its jargon so here we are going to give a brief criticism on montari's work the value of hall's montari's work is the placing of translation within its socio cultural context including the interplay between the translator and the initiator hall's montari later also describe the professional profile of the translator the model can be criticized not least for the complexity of its jargon moreover it fails to consider cultural differences now coming to one of the popular theory that is vermis scopus theory scopus is the greek word which means aim or purpose This theory was introduced into translation theory in the 1970s by Hans J. Vermeer. The major work on Scopus theory was developed by Rice and Vermeer. Scopus theory predates Hall's Montari theory of translatorial action and is considered to be the part of the that same theory because it deals with the translator translational action based on a st rules of the rice and vermis theory number 1 a translator translational action is determined by its scopus which means purpose it is an offer of information in a target culture and tl concerning an offer of information in a source culture and as well td does not initiate an offer of information in a clearly reversible way td must be internally coherent td must be coherent with the st so these are the five rules we stand in hierarchical order with the scopus rule predominating it now we are going to explain these rule one by one rule one is paramount the tt is determined by its scopus it's obvious that the target text is determined by its purpose by for which purpose translation is conducted rule number 2 is important in that it relates the st and tt to their main function second rule which suggests that it is an offer 
of information in a target culture tl concerning an offer of information in a source culture and sl so this rule is important it relate st and tt are showing a relationship between the source text and the target text rule number 3 which is about tt that tt does not initiate an offer of information in a clearly reversible way third point indicate that the function of a tt in the target culture is not necessarily the same as that of the source text in the source culture rule 4 and 5 says that tt must be internally coherent and tt must be coherent with the st so it's the responsibility of the text target text that it relates internally with the language and also with the st touches on general scopus rule concerning how the sex of the action and information transfer is to be judged on its functional adequacy so here we can get two rules one is coherence rule and the other is the fidelity rule coherence rule states that the tt must be interpretable as coherent with the tt receiver situation so the focus is on tt that it must be interpretable coherent with the tt receiver situation so there is no concern of st or s t receiver situation in coherence rule on the other hand the fidelity rule merely states that there must be coherence between the tt and the st fidelity rule favors the balance between tt and the st or information is encoded for the tt receivers now coming to the last theory kristin kristin nord kristin it is important to note that kristin nord criticized vermeer theory the major functionalist aspect this functionality plus loyalty principle underpins nord's model nor talks about the loyalty for not loyalty is an interpersonal category referring to a social relationship between people in spite of criticism an important advantage of scopus theory is that it allows the possibility that the same text may be translated in different ways depending on the purpose of the tt and on the commission which is given to the translator in vermeer's word the theory does not state what the principle is this must be decided separately in each specific case now coming to the last theory that is nord's translation oriented text analysis Christian Nord text analysis in translation presents a more detailed functional model incorporating element of text analysis which examines text organization at or above sentence level types of translation product document pre translation and instrumental translation documentary translation it serves as recipient a document of a source cultural communication between the author and the st on the other hand the second instrumental translation deals with communicative purpose intended to fulfill its communicative purpose without the recipient being conscious of reading or hearing a text in a different form was used before in a different communicative situation nord model for translator training nord proposes a more flexible version of the model synthesizing many of these elements 
described in this chapter and highlighting three aspects of functionalist approach that are of particular use for translator training. These are the importance of the translation commission, the role of ST analysis, the functional hierarchy of translation problem. The importance of the translation commission. The translation commission should give the following information for both ST and TT. The intended text function, the addresses, sender and recipient, the time and place of text reception, the medium, the motive. Not establish a functional hierarchy when undertaking a translation, working top-down from a pragmatic perspective and with the intended TT function paramount. Comparison of the intended functions of the ST and the proposed TT helps to decide the function functional type of translation to be produced. Analysis of the translation commission determine those functional elements that may be produced and those that will need to be adapted to the TT addressee situation. The translation types help to decide the translation style. The problem of the text can then be tackled at a lower linguistic level. Now we come to the conclusion of this lecture. Functionalist and communicative translational theories. Explain Rice initials work and linking the language to the function, text type, genre, and translation studies. Rice's approach was later coupled to Vermeer's highly influential Scopus theory. Moreover, Scopus theory is part of the model of translatorial action also proposed by Halsman Terry. Nord's model, the last theory, designed for training translator retains the functional context but include a more detailed text analysis model. This is all from my side. Thank you.